make sure you grab different color of spray paints, different size thread edges, and everyday household items like cups or lids. My name is Arturo Lopez, and I created Spray Castle Studios back in 1999. I have then continued to show people diverse ways of creating master paintings in just a few minutes using nothing more than just spray paints and everyday household items. The beauty of this art is that you don't have to have a steady hand or know how to draw. All that requires is a little bit of imagination and some dedication. So join us and you too can become a spray castle master. I will walk you through diverse techniques of creating beginner level paintings, intermediate level paintings and techniques advanced level paintings, and will take your skills even further to master level paintings. So if you guys are ready to embark into a new art adventure, then grab your spray paints and materials, let's get started. Alright everyone, so I've done plenty of tutorials doing stencils. I'm pretty confident you guys by now probably know how to how to create a stencil. So here I went ahead and just cut out a stencil, uh, placed some colors underneath, and then I, I placed the stencil back on top of those colors. And now I'm just going to create the blue hue in the background, the effect of fire, right, which is the orange. and just gonna blend it in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on top of that because this is the brightest part of the fire, correct? I'm just gonna do a quick splash here at the very top and then I'm gonna fade it into red here on the bottom. So just get a little bit of red and let's fade that in. Now in this tutorial we're gonna talk about some of the things that you gotta think about when uh, when doing a spray painting like this. You know, if you wanna create it more realistic there's a few more things that you gotta consider. So we're going to go ahead and cover that. Now I'm going to create a terrain here on the bottom. So I'm going to add plenty of blue, right? And on this other area, I'm going to mimic the same colors of the flame that we have above. So I'm going to go ahead and place orange, red, right? And just a little bit of yellow. Now keep in mind this is going to be the ground colors. So now I'm just going to cover it up with black. This is going to be our neutral color. Remember guys that when creating uh, ground, oh, or in many cases uh, planets, you want to cover it with a neutral color. In this case being black or white. They're the only two neutral colors. And that means that you don't want to go over three colors. But if you put a neutral, you can do three colors, a neutral, and then three more on top of that. Anything more and you get a goo. So keep that in mind. So we added some colors underneath it, covered it in black. Now we're going to get our magazine sheet. We're just going to tear off a piece of it. And you guys know how to create this technique, right? The ground technique. We just take a piece of magazine, tear a piece of it, fold it very gently, and just kind of smear the colors together. So for those of you that have been watching my tutorials, it should be no problem. Uh, for those who are just joining us, I've got plenty of tutorials describing this technique more in detail. But basically, you know, it's real easy. Uh, you put, you remove the neutral color from on top with a magazine sheet very gently, just smearing it down. Now, see, in this tutorial, we went ahead and thought forward a little bit. See, I knew I wanted the ground to be showing the reflection of the fire from up above. So that's why I added those colors, the fire colors underneath. Now to make this painting a little more complex and give it some more dimension, we're going to add another layer of rocks. It's very simple. I add a little bit of black here on the bottom and then with the magazine sheet I simply tap and remove and see there you go. It creates a new layer of ground. See that? I'm also going to take this a step further and I'm going to add some water. Um, this is going to take some practice guys. You're really gonna have to start knowing your your cans how much how much is gonna come out it takes a little bit of practice so I'm just gonna add some blue and this will be my water see remember you don't aim directly at the painting you aim at the straight edge guys always at the straight, at the straight edge now I'm gonna mimic the same colors that I have above down below so I'm gonna use orange red and yellow okay remember aiming at the straight edge and you can see where I'm where I'm actually aiming and you just want that mist to fall onto your painting. 
All right, a little bit of yellow. And then to seal the deal, you want to add white. Uh, white will add the, the distinct effect of water, and you'll be able to tell where, where your water begins and your ground starts. All right, so, so far we have the gist of the painting, right, which is the background. Let's, let's add some more detail to the background by adding some stars. So I want this to be a night scenery. So very gently, aiming away a good 45 degrees from the painting, you want your paint to sputter. Now I've noticed a lot of spray painters will put uh, spray paint in their hands and then just kind of flicker onto the painting. That's fine too. However you do it, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here because this is the mouth of the dragon. So I want the fire to come out and just dwindle down here. Okay. Alright guys, now this painting is a little more complex than the last one, but this stencil is very generic and the way you can do something like this is maybe get a q-tip and dry in the details of a dragon. Um, you can definitely make more complicated stencils where you don't have to dry anything in. You just place your stencils on top and add some different colors. But I think this gets the gist around of how complicated you can you can get your paintings to look. Now we're gonna do the fire technique. This is a technique we practiced on last tutorial. We're gonna begin by creating the base and we're gonna use yellow. Now don't be shy on using plenty of paint because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a very thick base of yellow on the bottom and then we're gonna put red on top of that. Now you don't want the two colors to blend together because then that just makes orange. You want them to kind of mix, but not completely blend. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. Uh, it may take some practice. Some of you are just natural spray painters out there. You know, I come up with the technique and right away you're able to emulate it. Now that's awesome. If you're one of those guys, you know, keep up the good work. If you're not, well, keep practicing. Practice with the tutorials. I've got plenty of them. Send me emails. Okay, now it, this may take a few tries with the with the spray castle funnel. It's okay. Just try and make your fire as most realistic as you as you possibly can. Now, this is the part where we add some red. So I'm just gonna add a drop of red here, maybe a little bit here, and see so you can start seeing where some parts start turning orange and just kind of dab it. Use the point of the spray castle funnel. You can even use not the q-tip but just a little stick from the q-tip. If you use the q-tip it's going to absorb your paint. You don't want to do that. You kind of just want to mix it together. Now you notice the base on the back. You can really see that yellow outline right here. Well you want to get rid of that. You don't want to have any of that. Now this technique is very similar to the tree bark technique which I've used in plenty of trees but you always want to get rid of the visible layer in the back just gonna mix it together now if you have to come back and add a little bit of yellow on top of that that's fine too but see at the end look at that fire and it's just you using a little stick mixing the two together you can use the end of the spray castle, uh, spray castle tool as well one of the important things about this technique is to to try and make the fire look as realistic as possible. Sometimes that will require for you to do uh, twirls on, on the paint. See that? And that will just make your fire really stand out, make it more realistic. And that's the effect we're going after. Another important point that I hope you guys picked up from this tutorial is that when you're going to create something, it's good to think ahead. In this case, you know, we thought about the fire and I knew that I wanted the glow of that fire to show on my rocks below. This is the kind of pointers that make your paintings look more realistic. Uh, they also take a little bit more time. So you guys may not want to add so much detail to a painting like this if you're doing this live. Because when you're doing this live, you know, time is money. Uh, you definitely have a lot of clients, customers standing there. And they may get bored and start walking away. So it's good to add detail. But if you got some time where you can add a little bit more, it'll just make your painting stand out and look more realistic. Here I'm adding some trees. This is a silhouette technique. We're just using black and the spray castle funnel. And just add them in random places. 
make sure you add lots of branches the more branches you add the more realistic make them random you don't want to make them too straight and you don't want to make all the trees the same width yeah. you want to make some skinnier ones smaller some tall ones see here I have kind of like the same shape going on yeah that's a no no let's deviate from that let's just add some extra branches alright now here I'm just gonna use some yellow and I'm gonna add it to the black that we just put down now with the spray castle tool we're gonna create the bark effect we're gonna go up and down do lots of lines this will make our trees look more realistic and I'm gonna show you a close-up of that not only that it gives us the effect that there's light now it shows yellow because of the fire so maybe these trees are catching on fire okay do a little bit right here now take a look at that it just makes your trees come to life it, it, it adds more dimension to your painting here we're using a little bit of a sea sponge and black and we're just dabbing our paint right in there but do you see how it all goes together you have the ground glowing red because of the fire above you have the yellow from the trees now here I tapped into a little bit of yellow and black and this is highlights you know things to think about too if you're gonna make your painting more realistic so keep in mind this also takes time so it takes a little bit more time the more details you add into it um, you know you can actually do a painting like this if you're gonna do this live uh, if you already have the stencil maybe drawn a day before uh, maybe, maybe you have your basic colors underneath you know things to help you speed up the painting when you get out there okay just gonna add a little bit of yellow here we're gonna use the fire technique I'm gonna make it look like these trees are catching on fire so using the same technique we used on the dragon here just gonna add random spots see the red now here I'm using the spray castle tool to create the twirls in the fire just mixing it together do round circles you can get the, the tip of the spray castle funnel to do this as well experiment with several things and you'll get different effects so use the ones that you you feel work the best just gonna do that you know it may not look like much now but we'll make it look just like fire I think that's one of the beauties of our spray paint I think that's one of the things that really captivates people is that they get to see how you just put random colors on the paper and then it all comes together at the end look at that lots of detail on that well I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to uh, go to the website here spraycastle.net or spraycastle.com and uh, drop me a comment or two alright guys well I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial until next time keep those cans shaking <laughs>